Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And Joyous light of glory, holy and mortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the city of the sun, and we hope to the evening light, we sing to God. are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas. And has established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not lift up soul to what is false and does not swear to see. You will receive blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Who seek the face of God to Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. That the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors. That the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let our loving kindness, let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises within the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever. Amen. Amen.
reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. You are not of the night of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep, as others do, but let us keep awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. In the name of Jesus, amen. I read a story recently from a local newspaper uh, in England about a, a couple called the Nailers. And through the magic of the internet, I was able to read it here. So the Nailers had a significant wedding anniversary coming up. I think it was 25 years. And they had gotten married right around Christmas time, a little bit before, and made a plan to make that year special. So they decided before all of the uh, stress and the hoopla of the meals and the travel and the family and the friends, they were going to uh, take a weekend away. And so they got in their car, they drove for a couple of hours, and they were having a good time enjoying each other's company, starting off uh, this romantic weekend on their own before Christmas. They stopped off to get fuel after a few hours, and they did what you do. Mr. Naylor got out of the car, he filled up the gas tank, uh, his wife went inside to get something to drink, to use the restroom. He went inside, got some snacks, went back out to the car, took the gas pump out and returned it, and drove away. A little while passed, 17 miles to be exact, and Mr. Naylor asked his wife for directions for the next turn. He looked over to his right, and she wasn't there. On their romantic getaway for their 25th wedding anniversary right before Christmas, he drove 17 miles and never noticed that she wasn't there. Now, I have to imagine that uh, this didn't put things off to a good start. It may have even impacted the whole weekend away. And if I'm honest, I think I'd say that it may have bled over into the Christmas celebration a little bit as well. It's kind of an amusing story. I think it's why it stuck with me. But there's some truth there that I think really strikes a chord for us as we're concluding this Advent season and as we have this 1 Thessalonians 5 text before us. And I think what we see there is there's an innate fear inside of us that I think gets a little bit stronger around this time of year. And the fear is being forgotten. There's a lot of stressful things and preparations that lead up to the Christmas season. But I think if I have to name one that takes them all, it's a fear that as we're bombarded with media from all over the place that makes us really believe that everyone in the world 
is having a joyful, peaceful, celebratory Christmas with all their family and friends, all in the same house. I think we have a fear that maybe if we don't prepare in the right way or if we forget someone's gifts or if we say the wrong things or if we travel on the wrong days, maybe we'll be the one person who's left out who gets forgotten when all the world is up in joy. I think that there's a little bit of that theme that carries forward, of course. In this Advent season, as we look to the first coming of Jesus, the baby in the manger, as a lens to see his second coming on the last day, I think the same fear of being forgotten is there. The idea that maybe we just won't be ready. The idea that we'll do the wrong thing or be in the wrong place or not paying attention at the right time, and all of a sudden, poof, Jesus comes down in a cosmic triumph for all time, and he'll scoop up all your family and friends who are having fun without you at Christmas and bring them up to heaven, and you'll be here, forgotten. I think that fear really exists and lives inside of us, and it's why this season and this text is just so important. See, Paul, as he writes these words, he's a little bit worried about this church that he really loves in Thessalonica. The church there is completely surrounded and outnumbered by one to thousands, with idol worshipers, and they stuck out very obviously as not being a part of the in crowd. Persecution, fierce persecution followed. Every day, the church suffered for their beliefs going against the grain and holding a faith in the Lord Jesus. I have to imagine that at this point, they were lifting up that eternal refrain that rings so true in the Advent season, Come, Lord Jesus, quickly. You know, that's a theme that has always existed with God's people who looked forward to the coming of the Lord. And it really starts right away. As soon as God makes the promise to send the Savior into the world to Adam and Eve, I have to imagine every day, every single day, uh, maybe one of them gets a backache and they just want to go home to the place that God made for them. One of them gets the flu, and they just want to go home to the place that God made for them. Time goes on, they have a fierce argument, and they just want to go home to the place that God made for them. You see, they had this tough comparison that every time they did something wrong, or they suffered like we do, it would always get compared back to the perfection that God always intended for them and for you to have. And they just wanted to go home. And the only way it was possible was for the promised Savior to come. And as time went on, I have to imagine their humanity would peek out, cry out once in a while, wondering, did God forget about me, about us, about his promise? They lived for several hundred years and never lived to see the Savior. And they had to wonder sometimes if God forgot. Centuries pass, we find God's people enslaved in Egypt. 
And I'm sure they too cried out, Come quickly, Lord. That same promise of the Savior upon them, and even as it's repeated as they suffer, they have to have been wondering, Am I forgotten? 3,600 years and all sweeps us up to an era through the Old Testament times where God's people, every generation, would cry out, Surely now the Savior will come. And then they would pass with a wondering once in a while in their humanity, maybe he forgot about me. Another 400 years, no prophet, no word from the Lord, reminding God's people of his faithfulness. And then all of a sudden, John the Baptist is crying out in the wilderness, and Advent begins. Repent and be baptized is the message, but all the more than that, he didn't forget. He did send the Savior. He remembered his people all along. And when we look at our text today, our text today has Paul reminding the Thessalonians, encouraging the Thessalonians that God's love for them as people, as his people, and the faith that he has given to them are like an armor that they can use to take on all these fleeting thoughts that would peel them away from God, and that ultimately, the work of Jesus Christ has destined them to spend eternity in heaven, in the place that God made just for them. And ultimately, Paul is using the first advent to say God was faithful He sent Jesus Christ then, and that first advent got you ready for that second advent. And if you're crying out, come Lord Jesus, and you're wondering, surely now he must come or he's forgotten me because they're suffering so much day after day. They never have to wonder if they're ready. Paul tells them, don't worry about dates, don't worry about the seasons, Trust that God's love and the faith that he gives you has destined you in the work of Jesus Christ. You're already ready. And so, that same encouragement that Paul makes to the Thessalonians is the same encouragement that I think we can hold close today. that maybe as you walk through this Christmas season, if you have a little bit of that fear that the whole world is going to rejoice and leave you behind, the message for you is that the first advent of Jesus as you already prepared for the second advent because Jesus is right by your side. And God is building you up with an armor to take on the world by his power. And ultimately, if maybe this season your heart is hanging just a little bit heavier, the promise to you is as true and vivid as it ever has been And the baby in the manger reminds you that he has never and will never, ever forget you. Because just as you long to be with those you love and long to be with God forever, in the place made just for you, he all the more wants eternity with you. And so if you're ever wondering about that second coming and getting nervous about being prepared. All you have to do is look to the manger and realize that the Savior came once for you and the Savior is going to come again for you. And so, ready or not,
you are ready. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ to life everlasting. Amen. to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul Please kneel or remain seated for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For Matthew, Bill, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For Joseph, 
for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. stand. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Yeah. 